Okay, we'll swap horses, and I'd like to welcome Roland Tong, who is an international dressage rider, riding a six-year-old horse called Ambiance, who he's owned since he was a two-year-old. Roland and I are very good friends, but today I have the microphone, which means he has to do what I say. Hi, Roly. Roland is going to help by showing us firstly some movements that we can ride, and we're just going to talk for a moment about how we put these programs together. How it works is a little bit like ice skating. We have compulsory movements, so when you want to do dressage to music, you send off to British Dressage, and they will send you back a, um, a, a sheet with the compulsory movements at the level that you want to ride at. So in that case, with that horse, that was advanced medium level. Um, with this horse, he's six years old, so it's medium level test for him. So the compulsory movements are for medium level, a collected walk, an extended walk, um, a extended trot, shoulder in both ways and trot, half pass both ways in trot, half pass both ways in canter, medium canter, and the simple changes. So we have those as a list, and each of those carries the weight of a normal mark, so they're marked out of 10. Then there are additional marks at the end for choreography, use of the arena and inventiveness, and, the, um, and harmony between the horse and rider, and then also the marks for um, the choreography. So quite a lot of marks in there, and those marks are timesed by several also an inexperienced horse, so it's good for them to come and have a look. Um, they warmed up this morning with a guy riding four horses at once, standing on their backs, so really this should be absolute uh, child's play for them. So, the idea is that you make up a pattern that doesn't look like a normal test plan. So, I can only tell you how I do it. Everyone has their own different way. But I try to avoid markers if I can, because to me it then looks like a test. You're meant to be original, but not confusing to the judge. The plan should be inventive, but the judges like it to be symmetrical. Most people in most dressage to music tests will go trot walk, then canter. As you saw with the last horse, I went walk, and then trot, and then canter, and, back to, and then back to walk, and then to canter. So that was a little bit unusual. Now, musically, it's a little bit of a, um, little bit of a toss up. It has to be what you like, because my God, are you gonna listen to that music if you're gonna do dressage to music? You're gonna listen to that music again and again until your ears bleed and you hate it. So I always think at least start off by liking it. Um, so you want music you like. Now, I've been doing music for people for 15 years, and I always ask them the same question if I don't know them when they come in. I say, now, what do you want to do? Do you want to write to music you like? And they all nod and say, yeah. And then I say, or do, you want to use your, or do you want to win and you don't care? Then they all change their mind, and in 15 years, I've never had anybody who, does, who said to me they just want to ride around to what they want to ride around to. Now, I'm reliably informed by dressage judges um, that they don't all sit at home at night listening to Des O'Connor um, and won't be frightened by music with a strong beat um, or anything like that. In my experience, it's best not to go too way out there, um, as then it becomes a little like Marmite. Um, words, uh, music with words is frowned on. You can use a little bit. Um, don't do it if you have a horse that tends to open and close its mouth when you ride it, because it can look like they're singing. Entertaining, but uh, not necessarily going to help with the, with the final score. Right, so there's just some thoughts there. I also think it's important in a pattern to, uh, of music to use music that's from the, sh the same genre. So music that would be, um, for example, perhaps all jazz. That's not a medium, Roland. We're doing medium, love. <laughs> Now, this is a new movement that Roland's invented, especially for this demonstration. So he's committed. Come on, Alfie, good boy. <laughs> no, that's later, darling. World Cup, not yet. You can do it in a minute. Well, in a year or three. Um, 
OK, so why don't we, Roland, go canter? I, I knew this was going to be trouble, me and him. Oh, we're in canter, good. OK, and we're going to think about some movements. So there's a half pass movement in there. So we have to show that, and that can only be 10 meters across. So perhaps the thought would be, rather than going from the middle to the side, whatever, why don't we do that from the three-quarter line to the three-quarter line? So Roland, when you can, could you come down the three-quarter line and then ride your half pass to the three-quarter line? So straight away, we've come away from what happens in a test. So there's our half pass, three-quarter line to three-quarter line. Riding accurately when you're riding music is really important because we are only allowed to travel 10 meters sideways. And if you always go from the middle to the edge, it gets pretty blooming boring for the judges. Good. And then Roland's showing some counter-counter there, which is in at medium level. And could you do a serpentine in counter-counter, Roland? Because again, that's another movement. We don't have it in a straight test. Well, not a senior's test. It's in the ponies. But they're little. It's easier for them. So a serpentine in counter-counter is a nice movement with a nice flow. And then perhaps go round the corner in counter-counter and then medium counter back across the arena. So again, you wouldn't see that in a normal test, but it's a thought that's good for freestyle. And of course, one of the great things about freestyle is that if you have a little weakness, you can cover it a bit. Although well, you won't get away with too much. The judges aren't that stupid, unfortunately. They did see my one doing the Spanish walk at Olympia, sadly, even though I did have my back to them. <laughs> um, here we are. And then you could come onto a sort of figure of eight shape, Roland, and do a simple change. So the simple changes are, that's it, from there, and then at the left one. OK, and now, could you just change the range so you're in counter-counter again, and ride your serpentine in counter canter changing to the outside lead so you're on the wrong leg so we're going to ride and this is again another take it's original it's not confusing but you wouldn't see it in a test and all of these um, movements there's a degree of difficulty mark from medium and upwards in dressage to music good and then to the other lead um, but it does come along with this caveat of calculated risk. So you can try and be a real smarty pants, but it does have to come off. So there's an element of risk in there. That makes it more fun, I think. That's good. So again, that would be another movement that would work. And the important thing is to try to build with the crescendo of the music. So it is dressage to music, not dressage with music and I think that's a very important thing to remember that in the music there are phases, uh, phrases even <laughs> in the music and if you can start and finish movements with the phrasing of the music that is when it will start to look like a dressage to music program not a dressage with music program okay so we also have trot half passes in at medium level um, and they can be over the, over 10 meters so you can only go 10 meters sideways, but there's nothing to say that you can't then go five meters sideways. So Roland, can you go straight there and then ride a right half pass from the bottom corner there and then a right-handed 10 meter circle. A 10 meter circle now, yep. And then from the center line, ride a right-handed half pass to the three-quarter line, so just five meters. So there you are, it's not outside the degree of difficulty. That's it, and then to the three-quarter line, then do that the other way so the other end can see. It is important not to exceed the, the level of difficulty, so you can't do anything in a medium-level test that isn't at some point featured in a medium-level test. So the trick is to use the easier side of things. So perhaps to ride a less steep half pass, but to put it into the sequence again so it looks nice. And that will give you extra marks for artistic and choreography. It's a beautiful horse, isn't he? He's a six-year-old, and he's by um, Trento B. And he's on Roland. That was 10 meters, love. Can we go again? 10 meters, circle, five meters. <laughs> you can do that as well if you want. <laughs> Roland's freestyling. That's important as well. 
because sometimes it doesn't always work out like you think it's going to work out when you do these music tests. It can depend a little bit on the going in the arena. Rubber surfaces tend to ride a bit slower. If I had a pound for the amount of people who tell me that they thought they were starting at A and they finished at C and had to make it up, then I would be very rich indeed. That's it, to the three-quarter line. Good. OK, and then go straight. So I would say that as well, to be prepared for the unexpected. When you write dressage to music, you have to be pretty aware of your music. You have to listen to it all the time, because then you will know if you're in the right place or in the wrong place in the arena, and that's really important. And in my experience, you spend quite a lot of the time um, where you don't think you're going to be. The walk music, um, again, is a place where you can sort of pick your uh, song a little bit depending on how strong your horse's walk is. If your horse has a fantastic walk, really loose, um, uh, then you could have music that picked out the footfalls of that, and that would work really well. If you have a horse that sometimes the walk is a little bit questionable, perhaps the walk can go lateral or, um, or the horse lose the, uh, lose the forebeat, then it's better to have music that's got a kind of general um, sort of swirly feeling to it. And the same with a trot. If your horse has a little sort of a smaller sort of stubby trot, sometimes you're better not to have music that picks out every single footfall. Sometimes it's better to have music that picks out every other footfall. And then if there is an irregularity or a change in the rhythm, then it doesn't look quite so obvious. So the music really should enhance the horse and not detract from it. <laughs> 